हेलो बच्चो सत श्रीकाल नमस्ते फ्रॉम माय साइड हाउ आर यू ऑल सो दिस इज इंद्रजीत सिंह वेलकमिंग यू ऑल अंडर द मोस्ट सेंसफुल प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर एन एस्पेरेंट्स दो आर प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर जेई नेट काइंड ऑफ एग्जामिनेशन सो होप सो यू ऑल आर हैविंग फन गाइस राइट so uh, this would be the last session of the current electricity i uh, know that it went on very long but uh, lots of contents we were about to discuss and we had a fun also so guys i i think without wasting our time today it would be completely based on lots of awesome sums we are going to see a very simple concept deviated into the very appropriate manner and it can represented in front awesome way right so uh, i think we are about to Move on for the right the PYQs. Lots of PYQs are there, so let's move on to it. Okay. So now the first question appears in front of you on mobile and computer screens, right? Okay. This question is asking 2019 main. The space between two concentric conducting spheres of radii A and B is filled with the medium of resistivity rho. the resistance between the two spheres will be what what does the question states two spheres are there okay one is having the inner one is having the radius of a second is having the radius of b right and uh, b is greater than a now in between uh, see in between the two spheres there exists a space a free space that free space is completely filled with the material of the resistivity rho right that free space is completely filled with the material of the resistivity rho so first of all let's draw the diagram here okay this is a radius a okay this is radius b now in between this a and b the entire thing is filled up with the material like this way okay obviously if it is uh, right filled with some material then obviously it is going to provide some resistance because material is see first of all i'm not talking about whether it has been fluid or something else whatsoever the material is should be it always provide some resistance okay resistance is never uh, right purely zero okay even internal resistance x there exists some value yes in physics from the theoretical theory point of view we are generally we are avoiding it but if it is mentioned into the question we have to accept it okay so here this is a situation in a radius is i am not saying in a radius the radius of the smaller sphere is a and the radius of the smaller larger sphere is b now what we have to do right to find this resistance first of all we need to select one current element right or one elemental right or you can say we have to select one continuous body having in the elemental charge distributed on it okay or in another sense suppose if we are taking right the resistance of the material let's say okay uh, right let's say the elemental right mass is at x right for this elemental mass the resistance provided is dr for the entire filled thing resistance is r for this entire elemental mass the resistance is dr okay now this dr is at the x distance from the center okay so again i say see the general formula of the resistance is r that is is equal to rho l by a but if i am to define for this elemental mass then i am going to give you all uh, right the resistance will be dr into rho its width is dx whole divided by 4 pi x square will be the area right see a very simple formula of resistance you can just imagine r is equal to rho l by a resistance completely depends on the geometry right and the temperature resistance completely depends on the geometry and the temperature a very simple equation right in j means how it is drifted 
right how it is deviated and it is asked in front so that students should get confused yes you all should get completely confused no one have ever thought of that this equation can be represented in this form now how the value of this x is getting changed x is getting changed from small a to bigger b okay so i must write it as x changes from a to b so this is the limit of the x now to find the resistance see for the small see for the entire it is r for smaller it is dr so can i say that okay integrating the equation on the both side i'm going to get the rho of d of x whole divided by 4 pi of x of square okay now we are going to solve this stuff what will be the limits right limits it will be from 0 to r and this is from a to b okay now solving it further we are going to get resistance as right why i took the a and b as limit because uh, whatever the area that is filled in between a and b we need to calculate the resistance for that whatever the area is that has been filled in between a and b we need to calculate the resistance for that okay so r that is equal to rho dx by 4 pi r square okay so this uh, rho by 4 pi that is a constant term it is going to get common we are going to get integrate from dx by x square limiting from a to b okay so resistance it is going to come as rho by 4 pi okay minus 1 by x limiting from a to b okay limiting from a to b so replacing all of those values rho by 4 pi okay minus 1 by b minus minus 1 by a okay so r you are going to come up as 1 by 4 pi right minus 1 by b plus 1 by a right so the resistance of the filled material it is going to come as r is equal to rho by 4 pi 1 by a minus 1 by b okay this is the perfect answer for this specific question okay this is the perfect answer for this specific question okay i am moving aside right guys i am moving aside okay if you want to have a snap of it you can just have it right on the countdown of five okay four three two one that's it rho by four pi right one by a minus one by b this is a perfect answer for this specific question is it cool now suppose if i am uh, uh, deviating a question right if i am deviating a question right now you are going to get stuck into it okay same question if i am deviating see a right? new thing is going to come up suppose in this you see the density of the material is given as constant let's say the density of the material is changing rho zero it is changing from right r by r or you can say okay let's keep it very simple let's keep this simple suppose okay let's keep this simple suppose the resistivity is changing from rho of r okay resistivity is not constant it is uh, right changing with respect to r okay or let's say it is changing with respect to x now the things are going to be quite difficult in the previous case resistivity was constant now suppose if this kind of the question is coming up into the examination how we are going to solve it okay awesome and solid right conceptual based sums right are there in this session so please mind it right and stay till end again same thing we are going to say dr is equal to rho right dx whole divided by 4 by x square in this we are going to replace the value of right x so dr you are going to get it as rho of right x into dx whole divided by 4 pi right into x square one x is going to get cancelled right so dr you are going to get it as rho into dx whole divided by 4 pi of x okay now here what happens integrating this equation on the both sides let's limit it from 0 to r and we are limiting from a to b okay this is rho of rho naught of dx whole divided by 4 pi of x 
make it common rho naught by 4 pi is common you are going to get integrate a to b right dx by x so this resistance is going to be rho naught by 4 pi right ln of right b by a this will be the value of the resistance see how things are getting changed right this is an extra sum from my side yesterday i told you all right awesome and maximum number of the sums we are going to see right a different sums yesterday in previous lecture i told you all right a different sums we are going to see in this session okay different sums right we are going to see in this session okay now suppose if resistivity is changing with respect to any equation rho is equal to rho 0 1 minus cos of ax or you can say 1 minus cos of x okay things are going to be quite difficult for you all right suppose it is changing from rho 0 of x square right suppose it is changing from rho is equal to rho 0 plus rho 0 of x any equation may appear na? now being a student of mathematics you should be aware of how differentiation or how integration is done okay so uh, if you don't have a snap of it you can and the countdown of 5 4 3 2 1 see now here the resistivity uh, was constant I'm sorry, uh, we were talking about the resistivity. The resistivity was constant in the previous case, in the, the extra sum we saw in which resistivity may change with respect to, right, R. I'm extremely sorry for that, okay. So, B is a perfect answer. Hope so you like this question, okay. Now, see, the mobility and the small cheat put, cheat put things are coming up in front, okay. A current of 5 ampere passes through the copper conductor having resistivity this. Its radius of cross section is this. Find the mobility of the charges if their drift velocity is this. How mobility is defined? How we can correlate it to the drift velocity? Okay, this thing is going to come up in the session. First of all, see, just keep this thing into your mind. Whenever you are having the lots of data, just note it down, whatever it is given. Okay, now it will be quite easy to reach up to the answers. First of all, let's determine the current it is given. The current it is given is 5 ampere. Let's denote it I is equal to 5 ampere. The resistivity it is given as rho, okay, that is 1.7 into 10 to the power minus 8, right, ohm meter. The radius of the cross section it is 5 mm. Can I say it is 5 mm and it is, uh, if we are converting into the one unit system that is 5 to 10 to the power minus 3 meter. Find the mobility of the charges, right? See, drift velocity is this, okay? Drift velocity is 1.1 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter per second. What we need to calculate? We need to calculate the mobility. Mobility is defined as mu, okay? Mobility is defined as mu, right? Yes or no? Mobility is defined as mu. Now, how we are going to deal with this question? Anything that can connect all of those formulas, any, any formula, sorry, any formula that can connect all of those physical quantities, yes or no? The, the, does it exist? The, the, are we having any, have, have we haven't, see, first of all, this is a question of 2019 mains, okay? Have we ever dealt with this kind of the question, right, uh, right, in which we can, right, having a formula that can connect all of those physical quantities? So let's move on to the very general approach, the formula of the mobility that is drift velocity per unit electric field. Drift velocity per unit electric field. Okay. Still we are not having the value of the electric field. Can I replace mu is equal to drift velocity whole divided by resistivity into current density. Okay. These two most important formulas are there. Okay, they are explaining to the concept of the drift velocity. Now the things are going to be quite easy for us. Right. Mobility that is equal to drift velocity. Drift velocity is 1.1 into 10 to the power minus 3. Resistivity you are going to have it as 
how much resistivity is there uh, 1.7 into 10 to the power minus 8 okay and j i am replacing it current per unit area can i replace j as current per unit area right current it is 5 ampere area right uh, the copper conductor can we say it is a pi r square pi what is the radius r that is 25 into 10 to the power minus 6 okay solving this you are going to get the value of the mu is approximately 1.01 right meter square per volt second this is the mobility okay you have to just replace the values and get the answer okay you have to just replace these values and get the answer yes or no guys okay i'm moving aside on the countdown of five you can have a snap of it okay you see uh, uh, generally okay first of all uh, let's have this five four three two one Generally, I used to forget to say all of those things, right? Before moving on, before start solving this sum or before discussing that sum, I should give you all a time to solve it. So you can pause this video, right? And solve it by your own. But sometimes it happens, I used to forget, uh, right? It happens. Okay, I'm also a human. Okay, I'm also a human, right? So can we move on to the next sum onto it? Right? Can we move on to the next sum? Uh, first of all, I want to tell you all, uh, sorry guys, if you are feeling that I am not, right, if you all are feeling that Indraji sir is quite less energized, so I must say, really I am not well, okay, okay, as of the high temperature that is going on, right, into the, right, and the, then this, this days, okay, it is affecting me a lot, okay, I don't like this high temperatures, even no one likes it, but I can't face warmth, Okay, so it's because of this, sometimes it happens in the very 7th day or 10th day it happens, right? So today, uh, so please I heartily apologize for that if you are feeling that Indraji sir is not as much energized as was in the, he was in the previous lecture, okay? Kindly forget me for this, okay? So now let's move on to the next question into it. This question was asked in 2019, mains April. In an experiment, the resistance of the material is plotted as a function of temperature. As shown into the figure, it is a straight line. One may conclude that. Okay. They conducted one experiment and this graph is, was plotted up. Okay. They conducted one experiment and this graph was plotted. Now what happens here? Okay. When they conducted an experiment. Okay. So from this graph right which equation is the correct equation that represents this graph okay which is the correct equation that represents the graph okay how we are going to solve this first of all let's move aside uh, i'm giving you all a five seconds right and then the countdown of five you can just pause this video and try to solve it by your own okay this is not okay first of all five four three two one this question is not having that uh, approach as all you are thinking that uh, we will move on to some mathematical expression right and finally we will reach up to the result that will match this equation from all of those options right and we're going to take up the answer no this question is having the different approach right this question is having the different approach okay now what actually it is See, it's a very simple thing. We are going to solve this somebody trial and error method. Okay, we are going to uh, right first of all, we are going to obtain this equation from this graph, and we are going to pick each and equation, each and every equation from the option, and we are going to match it up, whether they are going to match it or not. Right, like that way we have to deal with this question. Okay, so maximum number of the questions those who are asked in J E main examination are based on the calculation or they are conceptual, but in every paper there exists one question that can be solved using trial and error method okay that spatial question has a in case of the characteristics they will not reach up to the answer but you have to compare your results with each option and you you have to identify whether right those answers are right the given answers are correct or not 
so here you can see suppose if i'm joining this line okay suppose if i'm joining this line right so this angle is going to be obtuse okay theta is going to be obtuse theta is obtuse it means we are going to get the negative slope okay theta is going to obtuse then we are going to have the negative slope okay now what happens here it's a very simple thing negative slope okay if we are following the equation of the straight line y is equal to mx plus c okay we are following the equation of the straight line y is equal to mx plus c right okay y is equal to mx plus c now on the y side we are having the right uh, ln of rt slope is negative can i say it is m on the x side we are having 1 by t square on the intercept we are having c okay so can i write it down this equation is ln of r of t right is equal to minus m by t square plus c this is the format of the equation that is coming up from the graph this is the format of the equation that is coming up from the graph right so we need to match up all of those equations we need to resolve all of those equations and to match up with it okay see now result is coming as ln of rt is equal to minus m by t square plus c okay we have to match up with this results we have to match up with this results right now let's say the first equation okay let's use the first equation okay to match it up first equation is rt r0 e raised to minus t square by t0 right r of t is equal to r of 0 e raised to minus t square by t0 whether wrote that equation yes okay suppose let's say it is r of t by r of 0 that is e raised to minus t square by t0 so can i say it is ln of r of t whole divided by right r of 0 right that is equivalent to right uh, you can say minus t square by t0 okay now further we are resolving it it is ln r of t minus ln r of 0 right is equal to minus t square by t0 okay so you are having ln right r of t right is equal to minus t square by t0 okay plus ln r of 0 see this equation is matching y is equal to minus mx plus c but okay t square should be in beneath but we are having the t square into the numerator part in the equation t square should be into the denominator but here we are having the t square into the numerator part you can see that this is quantity on the y axis right the negative sign is of the slope 1 by t0 right you are uh, one actually it should be 1 by t0 square okay sorry it should be 1 by t square if you want to match up this equation and this is an intercept ln of r0 is an intercept right ln of r0 is an intercept right so the first equation is not matching up right okay so this is not going to be the correct answer according to the trial and error method right okay now see there is only the possibility if we are see like this way we need to analyze each and every question but i must say the c is going to match it up so let's directly move on to the c okay now let's match the c equation equation states that uh, right r of t is equal to r of 0 e raised to minus t0 square by t square minus t0 square by t square okay c now can i say it is r of t whole divided by r of right 0 okay is equal to e raised to minus t0 square by t square okay 
Suppose if we are analyzing this and replacing, uh, applying the log on both sides. So you are having ln of r of t, right, minus ln of r of 0 is equal to, right, minus t0 square by t square. See, t square is coming in between. Okay. So this will be ln, right, r of t is equal to ln of r of 0 minus t0 square by t square. See, this is forming. This is y, this is c, right, minus m, and this is of x. See, this equation is appropriately following. This is matching up with this, the needed equation. Okay. You can understand the complexity of this question. Okay, see, before moving on to an examination, you should all have uh, the 360 degree approach. Okay, what kind of the questions may come up, right? Through the exam, the entire exam uh, environment, you should all be aware of what actual thing is going to happen, what question, uh, what kind of question may come up. Either it can be on the, uh, right, uh, the trial and error method or directly we are going to solve it some and uh, going to reach up to the results. Okay, directly we are going to solve the sums and reach up to the results. Okay, so this is the perfect answer. So I must say, right, like this way. Okay, the C is the perfect answer for this specific question. Okay, the C is the perfect answer for this specific question. Right. Now, let's move on to the next question on to it. It's half an hour and we only did the three questions. See, it's in half an hour. We only did the three questions, but those three were awesome. Okay. Generally, uh, the students are having the misconception, right, that uh, direct formula based question. No. Some of the conceptual questions are there. Some of the, as usual, as what is our tradition of the PYQ lectures, one or two JE advanced based sums are also coming up, right. And generally, I used to give into the homework, but let's see today what actual the scenario is, okay. If, 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 uh, uh, on seeing the question, if I'm getting the vibes that yes, I have to give up into the, uh, this homework and I will else I will give you all else I'm going to solve it your own day. A metal wire of resistance 3 ohm is elongated to make a uniform wire of the double of its previous length. Right. There is one metal wire, okay, whose resistance is 3 ohm. There is one metal wire, right, whose resistance is 3 ohm. It is elongated to make the uniform wire of the previous length. Now, new wire is now bent, right, from the end joint to make the two points on the circle making 60 degree at the center. Then equivalent resistance between these two points will be what? See, first of all, just keep one thing into the mind. Always, see, this question is asking me in 2009, 9th of April. Just keep this thing. Whenever the wire is stretched, na, the volume is always constant. Volume is not going to change. So, according to the equation of the resistance R, that is, is equal to rho L by A. Can I say it is rho L square by volume? Why I use that equation? Because in, if we are using this here, area was, right, uh, area is, like, changing with respect to the length. But in this equation, if you are following the equation, uh, if you are following the equation of the resistances, R is equal to rho L square by V, right? In which the volume is constant, rho is constant and the things are getting changed. So I can say that from this equation, R is directly proportional to L square. So R1 by R2, that is, is equal to L1 square by L2 square. So R2, you are going to get it as 4 of R1. R1 is 3 ohm. R2 you are going to get it as 12 ohm. Okay. The resistance of the new wire we are going to get it up as 12 ohm. The resistance of the new wire we are going to get it as 12 of ohm. Okay. Now what happens here? This entire wire is bent into the form of the circle. 
right the see now wire was stretched initial the resistance was 3 ohm now one after stretching it we got the new resistance value as 12 ohm now after stretching it it is bent into the form of the circle this kind of the questions are right are also asked into an examination okay now here there existed two points point a and point b those points are making right 60 degree with respect to the center the resistance of the entire wire is 12 ohm i must say resistance of this is r1 resistance of this is r2 we need to calculate the equivalent resistance in between to this so that equivalent resistance it is going to be 1 by r1 right plus 1 by r2 because r1 and r2 are going to be parallel right if we are plotting up these two points from here now right when we are going to attach the potential difference between them okay then r1 and r2 is going to be parallel in the parallel connection now for the entire 2 pi 360 degree the resistance is 12 ohm directly we are using the unitary method then for pi by 3 right this resistance will be what so it is 12 into pi by 3 whole divided by 2 pi so this pi is going to get cancelled okay so 3 2s are 6 just hold on for the entire 2 by 360 degree we are having 12 ohm okay and for the pi by 3 that is 60 degree okay how much so it is pi by 3 into 12 by 2 pi okay so this is going to be 2 ohm right so this r1 value is going to come as 2 ohm and the remaining value it is going to come at as 10 ohm now 2 ohm and 10 ohm are connected in parallel okay 2 ohm and 10 ohm are connected in parallel okay so what will be the equivalent resistance of it okay so r equivalent directly i am going to tell up as 10.2 whole divided by 12 to 6 10 by 6 then it is going to be 5 by 3 ohm okay the equivalent resistance we are going to come up as 5 by 3 ohm and this is a perfect answer for this specific question Okay, this is the perfect answer for this specific question. Right, yes or no? Yes or no? D is the perfect answer. So, we have seen the simple formula. I, R is equal to rho L by A. Right, how it is used in this form? And into the very first question, we saw how it is used into this form. Right. Okay. So just keep this thing into mind. This kind of the questions are coming up always into an examination. Okay. Now let's move on to the next sum onto it. Right. In a conductor, if the number of the conduction electrons, see it is said that in a conductor, right, if the number of the conduction electrons per unit volume is this and mean free time is this its approximate resistivity will be what this is a, a direct formula that is coming up right 2019 means 9 april okay please don't aware of dates right dates are like that only please don't mind about it okay see what i told you all whenever the long data is given just write it down okay if the number of the electrons per unit volume number of electrons per unit volume is 8.5 into 10 to the power 28 right per meter cube mean free time right that is 25 femtoseconds right it is femtosecond 1 femtosecond with 25 femtoseconds its approximately resistivity will be what right resistivity we need to calculate right mass of electron it is given as 9.1 into 10 to the power right minus 31 kg okay anything else okay femtoseconds right a new term is going to come up okay have you ever heard about it yes or no so femtosecond 25 femtosecond it is given first of all i want to tell you all one femtosecond that is, is equal to 10 to the power minus 15 seconds. Okay. 
one femtosecond that is equivalent to 10 to the power minus 15 seconds okay so okay moving aside okay we need to calculate the resistivity okay moving aside you can just uh, uh, calculate it okay on the countdown of 5 4 3 2 1 okay, you might have paused this video and saw it out okay now let's see this okay we are having the direct formula the mass that is is equal to n e square tau right n e square tau into rho okay what is the formula is m e square right tau into rho okay so what happens here m and e square see this is a direct formula whenever we are dealing with the questions of the drift velocity whenever we are dealing with the questions of the right current density and the combination of it whenever we are dealing with the mobility this kind of the equations always comes right and this we have seen you have might have seen this is a very shit put thing you might have seen into your lectures okay so what happens here m is equal to n e square tau of rho m is equal to n e square you have to just replace these values rho that is is equal to m whole divided by n e square tau so rho mass you are going to get 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 okay n is 8.5 into 10 to the power 28 okay uh, e square that is 1.6 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 38 okay tau it is 10 to the power minus 15 seconds okay replacing all of those values right solving it you are going to get the value of the row as 1.67 nearly equivalent to into 10 to the power minus 8 ohm meter okay so it is closely equivalent to 10 to the power minus 8 ohm meter and this is the perfect answer for this specific question. It is closely equivalent to 10 to the power minus 8 ohm meter. And this is the perfect answer for this specific question. A direct formula based sums are right are also coming up into an examination. Now let's move on to the next question onto it. Aha! The question of resistance came up. Okay. The question of resistance came. This, uh, this question we are going to solve by using the potential distribution method. Right? Okay. See, in 2019 means the 9th April. Okay. You can solve it by KVL. Okay. But I'm today I'm going to see KVL we did it into the uh, last lecture. But today I'm going to go give you all a new method. That is potential distribution method. That thing we have discussed into the capacitors. We have solved one or two sums right using that method. But okay, uh, we are going to use even that. Uh, we are going to use that into the different manner for this question. Okay. See, uh, the entire connection is given. We need to just calculate out, calculate out, right? What actual the charge is stored in this capacitor. From the question, I'm imagining anyhow, if I'm able to calculate the voltage at this point. Anyhow, if I'm able to calculate the voltage at this point, right? I must say. Anyhow, then I am able to calculate the charge on the capacitor. Okay, first of all, okay, just hold on. Just hold on guys, because I need this image on the right. Okay, I need this image on the right to solve this sum. I need this image. Okay. Anyhow, if I'm able to uh, right find out the potential at this point. Let's say it is V. Anyhow, then I'm going to get what will be the charge stored into the capacity. So suppose I'm using KCL to solve this complex circuit. Yes. Okay. While using the KCL into the complex circuit, consider right all of the below points that are as grounded. Right. Step one. Consider all of those points as grounded among the top we are having two nodes this is node number one this is node number two select any reference node 
लेट से हियर पोटेंशियल इज पी हियर वी आर हैविंग द पोटेंशियल एस बी फॉर फर्स्ट रेफरेंस नोड ओके द अनदर नेम ऑफ द मेथड इज ऑल्सो राइट दिस इज ऑल्सो डिफाइन इट्स ऑल्सो we it's named as nodal analysis nodal analysis right the name itself states that we are analyzing a specific node using kcl so here the step one right of this nodal analysis is whatever the nodes you are present they are present in beneath the circuit in the bottom part of the circuit consider all as grounded right now analyze each and every node using kcl that is at the top part of the circuit in the top of the circuit so for the first reference node you can see this is the current entering into the circuit i this is current moving on this side i1 and this is i2 can we using can we use kcl yes using kcl i can say i that is is equal to i1 plus i of 2 because i is entering and i1 and i2 are leaving so i is flowing as because of potential difference between 72 minus p right hole divided by 6 resistance i1 is flowing as because of p minus 0 hole divided by 4 plus i2 is flowing as because of p minus v right hole divided by 2 72 minus p by 6 is equal to p by 4 plus p minus v by right now we need to solve this stuff 72 minus p by 3 is equal to p by 2 plus p minus v 72 minus p by 3 is equal to p right 3p minus 2v by 2 right 144 minus 2p is equal to 9 of p right minus 6 of v we are going to obtain one equation from it right we are going to obtain one equation from it okay that is 144 minus 2p okay that is is equal to 11 of p right minus 6 of v can i say this is equation number 1 yes we can say it as equation number 1 now let's move on to the second reference node i2 is entering this side let's say i3 is moving on this side and i4 is moving on this side generally it is not given any current is flowing whether the current is flowing through the capacitor or not it is not given but through this we are able to calculate that stuff okay so the i2 that is flowing can i say it is between p minus v whole divided by 2 for reference node 2 right for reference node 2 okay that will be equivalent to v minus 0 whole divided by 10 on the another part we are having nothing okay so we are not going to write anything so this is going to be p minus v that is is equal to v by 5 5p minus 5v right that is is equal to v so it's 5p minus 6v is equal to 0 can i consider this is equation number 2 right solving 1 and 2 we are going to get right 20 volt the potential at this point you are going to get approximately 20 volt approximately right so whatever the potential you got it at this point as 20 volt the same is going to get right the capacitor is going to get it okay 
so uh, what i'm going to do here the potential is going to be 20 volt right so the charge stored into the capacitor is a c into v the capacitance value is 10 microfarad potential is 20 volt so it is going to be 200 micro coulomb of the charge that is stored into the capacitor right 200 micro coulomb the b is the perfect answer for this specific question okay so this is a new method that is known as nodal analysis okay this is the new method that is known as nodal analysis in the nodal analysis right step one make all of those reference nodes that is at the bottom part of the circuit right as grounded and analyze the each and a uh, uh, reference node right that is on the top part of the circuit right using kcl obtain this two equation right you can get the answer same thing you can uh, solve it by kvl also but that uh, part will be quite complex okay see this kind of the sums are coming up into an examination from the current electricity again the question that is asking 2019 means 9 april a wire of resistance r is bent to form a square as shown into the figure the effective resistance between E and C will be what? The entire wire is bent into the form of this square. Now after that the triangle is going to come. Okay. Now square is there and after that the triangle is going to come. Okay. So what will be uh, the effective resistance between point A and C? Suppose if I am uh, right pointing out the two, these two terminals, right? and connecting a potential difference between them let's say v right okay then what will be the effective resistance between this two what will be the effective resistance between this two so first of all okay i'm moving aside on the countdown of five if you want to uh, write solve it by pausing the video you can five four three two one that's it Can can we move forward? Yes or no? Yes or no? Okay. Suppose uh, the wire of the resistance, the resistance of the wire is R. Now it is a perfect square. So lengths are equal. So resistance is directly proportional to L. Can I say this is R by 4? This is R by 4. This is R by 4 and the entire part is R by 4. For that, it is R by 8 and R by 8. Yes or no? It is divided into the four equal parts. Right? It is divided into the four equal parts. This one is R by 4 as resistance is directly proportional to length. Okay? So, the for the entire wire, this is good. For the entire wire, this much amount of the length is going to be one fourth of it. Okay, it is going to be one fourth of it. So here the resistance is R by 4. Here we are having R by 4. Here we are having R by 4. And here, right, it is exactly in question. It is mentioned E is at the midpoint of arm CD. So this is going to be get divided equal into it. Now, R by 8, R by 4, R by 4 and I by 4. This all are in series. And the resultant of all of this is in parallel with R by 8. Okay. So it means that all are in series. So first of all, let's obtain the equation, write the equivalent for all those who are in series. That is R by 4, R by 4, R by 4 plus R by 8. So this is going to be R1 that is, is equal to 3 R by 4 plus R by 8. So R1 you are going to get 6 R, 7 R by 8. Now 7 R by 8 and R by 8 are connected in parallel. Right. So if they are connected in parallel, then how we are going to identify? Right. How are you going to find the equivalent resistance? The R equivalent that is, is equal to if they are connected in parallel, then it is 7 R by 8. It is R by 8 whole divided by 7 R by 8 plus R by 8. Okay. 
सो दिस इज गोन बी सेवन आर डॉट आर बाई सिक्सटी फोर होल डिवाइडेड बाई एट आर बाई एट इज आर वन आर इज गोन गेट कैंसल्ड आर इक्वी वैलेंट यू आर गोइंग टू गेट इट एज सेवन आर बाई सिक्सटी फोर एंड दिस इज द परफेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस स्पेसिफिक क्वेश्चन right okay see this kind of the questions from the current electricity are going to come we have seen the concept of current density we have seen the concept of mobility we have seen the formulas of the equivalent resistance we solved it the entire circuit using the nodal analysis right see if you are combining the entire lecture and then a lot of methods i have given you all okay it reminds me about my previous session okay we have discussed uh, we have discussed the kvl Right, we have discussed the potential distribution method. Lots of things we discussed. Right, lots of things we discussed. But here, I what I want to tell you all, okay, uh, if you are combining the PYQ lecture and that previous session, okay, the entire package you are getting it. Okay, I have designed this crash course, right, in such a way that entire package you are getting it. how the entire package you are getting it suppose in lecture we are having the less amount of the time okay and if you are able to see uh, we were having the target to solve uh, approximately 10 to 12 sums but as of so reason as of some long theoretical explanation or providing some more example right or demonstrating the more examples right so we are uh, always right uh, we uh, suppose we moved on to the 7 to 8 sum then dpp is there If something is remaining, then it comes up. It is covered up into the DPP. Now things that is not uh, right uh, covered up into the DPP or into the special lectures, then it comes up into the PYQs. Okay, and test test is always awesome. So I must say, uh, right, <laughs> this thing. What I'm gonna say? I'm gonna say yes. It's a complete package. The DPP, the lectures, the PYQ, and the test. Right. and the modules if you are solving this just for 3 months and following this crash course strictly obviously you are going to go score best into this examination obviously you are going to score best into this examination right okay now let's move on to the next question on to it now see again this kind of the question uh, is came upon into the different shift in 2019 means a uniform metallic wire has the resistance of 18 ohm and it is bent into the equilateral triangle then the resistance between any two vertices of the triangle will be what now the wire is bent into the form of the equilateral triangle okay see the situation states that this is an entire wire a b okay now it is the resistance of the wire is 18 ohm now it is bent right into the form of the equilateral triangle now equilateral triangle is all uh, uh, right the three sides of the equilateral triangle is equal so can i say this 18 ohm is equally divided into three parts 6 ohm 6 ohm 6 ohm they are saying you have to find the equivalent resistance between any two vertices let's pinpoint two what is is a and b okay let's say it is a dash and b dash because this the notions we have taken it here only these two are in series and in parallel with this what will be the r equivalent right that is 12 dot 6 whole divided by 12 plus 6 12 6 by 18 6 3 za 3 4 za r equivalent you are going to get it as 4 oh right the d is the perfect answer for this specific question r equivalent you are going to get it as 4 ohm and the d is a perfect answer for this specific question this question is uh, right fun to all asking this question right is what we can say you are blessed right the question this question that came up into the shift and the students those who are uh, right in that 
like those who are in that specific shift right they are blessed right they are avatars right because they are lucky persons and right? they are most most they are luckiest yes that's a specific word why this question is nothing to do <laughs> with the concepts of current electricity okay this question has nothing to do with the concepts of the current electricity immediately using the units and measurement you can solve this question two steps even maximum number of the students are solving it orally okay let's see this a copper wire is stretched to make 0.5 percent longer the percentage change into the electrical resistance if volume remains constant will be what volume remains constant same formula we have used resistance depends on the length as r is equal to rho l by a but volume is constant it means area and length are changing right like that way so here multiplying l on both sides right so you are going to get resistance r is equal to rho l square by volume now rho is constant v is constant okay directly can i say delta r by r that is is equal to 2 delta l by l delta l by l is given as multiplying 100 on both sides to convert it into the percentage so delta r by r you are going to get it has 2 into 0.5 that is 1 percentage see how things are asked into an examination and they are right creating what we can say the psychological impact on your uh, on you all how this question is right on how this question is the first question this is like uh, uh, and this question is like wallah wallah al habibi hamara teen show aayega ki nahi aayega is question ko dekh ke char mark to aayega aayega right ha na okay so this lecture would be in hindi na you are all are going to rocket a rocket 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 going forward to the next question aha a mobility okay don't worry this is a homework from my side this question is very nice question based on the mobility okay uh i am This question is asking J May two thousand and nineteen, the ninth of Jan. I'm not aware of the dates, but my DTP operator is like quite conscious, over conscious person, right? That he have written all of those dates and everything. Okay, he is over conscious person, so he has written all of those dates and everything, right? Now here come of the questions, right? Uh, of the Okay, before solving this, let's solve. <laughs> Both sums are quite complex. Okay, let's solve this. Okay, four point charges minus q plus q plus q and minus q are placed on the y axis at y is equal to minus two d, y is equal to minus d, y is equal to plus d, and y is equal to plus two d. the magnetic field okay sorry the mag not magnetic field the magnitude of the electric field at a point on the x axis will be what may in 2019 if you have moved on to the equation of the dipole right equation of the dipole okay let's see let's draw this figure first okay let's draw this figure okay this is zero let's say this is x 
is equal to plus of d this is the point we need where we need to calculate the net electric field okay this is the point where we need to collect uh, the calculate the net electric field now there are four point charges okay minus q at minus 2d plus q at minus d okay first of all minus q at minus 2d okay let's say this is minus 2d right and minus q charge is kept okay second plus q on minus d plus q minus d right okay now the third charge is plus d it's plus and minus q so it is plus q plus d right minus q okay plus 2d this last is minus q and plus 2d no dipole is formed actually dipole is formed also and no no dipole is formed so this is the arrangement of the charges right this is the arrangement of the charges let's name all of those as one two three and four because to calculate the electric field the net electric field at this point is because of all of those charges it is going to be the awesome concept right so first of all i'm moving aside on the countdown of five right if you want to solid you can just right on the countdown of five four three two one okay <sighs> minus q right let's solve the sum okay see minus q so first of all i want to tell you all this is electric field is because of one right this is electric field as because of one this is positive q i must say this is electric field as because of two okay like this way. three this is a positive charge i must say this is electric field as because of 3 and 4 right this is electric field as because of the 4 so the net electric field it is you see this question is going to be quite long right so it is even vector plus e2 vector plus e3 vector plus e4 vector okay so plus q and minus q right things are going to get cancelled out for this let's see Okay, what things are going to get cancelled out suppose if i'm talking about c okay this is theta one this is theta two okay this is theta one and this is theta two okay so i must say this will be e1 cos of theta one right e1 sine of theta one similarly e4 right angles will be same right so this will be e4 cos of theta one right e4 sin of theta 1 right so this sine component is going to get cancelled okay similarly for the positive charges right for the positive charges i must say this is theta 2 so this is gonna get theta 2 okay so this will be right e2 cos of theta 2 right and this will be e2 sin of theta 2 for this right e3 sine of right okay theta 2 and this is e3 cos of theta 2 okay so it means here also the sine component is going to get cancelled so the net electric field it is going to come up as right the net electric field that is equivalent to okay 2e cos of theta 1 negative of i plus right this is for e1 and that will be for e2 let's say 2e2 right cos of theta 2 of j right so the net electric field it is going to come up as 2 of e2 cos of theta 2 sorry i it is i right uh, minus 2 e of 1 cos of theta 1 right into unit vector i okay 
so net electric field that is going to be 2 into k of q right whole divided by see for a2 what will be the distance right this is d this is capital d okay so that distance would be under root of d square plus d square right and what will be the cos theta okay the cos theta it will be d whole divided by under root of okay this is going to be square it's d square plus d square minus 2 okay i'm writing it appropriately so this student should get okay and the things will get they will get confused okay this kind of the long sums are also asked right from the electrostatics so the net electric field you are going to get it as 2 into k of q whole divided by under root of d square plus d square whole square into replacing the cos theta it is small d right whole divided by under root of d square plus d square minus 2 into k of q what is the cos theta 1 so this is gonna be under root of 2d whole square plus d square 2d whole square plus d square into 2d okay for theta 1 this is a triangle for theta 2 this is a triangle both are making 90 degree okay so i have replaced the cos theta see for the smaller triangle okay this is d this is under root of right what we can say d square plus d square right this is theta 1 similarly for the triangle theta 2 i have did that i did that so the net electric field it is going to come up as 2 k q d whole divided by under root of d square plus d square right or in another sense you can write it down as Three by two minus four k q d whole divided by under root, or you can direct write it down as okay, four uh, d square plus d square whole to the power three by two. Okay, now we have to use the binomial expansion. Let's say okay, this will be let's make it two k q d s common, right? 2kqd as common so can i say it is d square plus d square whole to the power 3 by 2 minus right 2 into 4d square plus d square whole to the power 3 by 2 now here we have to use the binomial theorem right and directly i must say using the binomial theorem the net electric field is going to come up rest of the things are constant it is going to come up as 3 by 4 okay it is going to come up as 3 by 4 right yes it is going to come up as 3 by 4 so this much long calculate d by 4 okay this much long calculation it is okay electric field is inversely proportional to d by 4 and this is the perfect answer for this specific question okay this is the perfect answer for this specific question yes or no right now let's move on to the next question this is uh, exactly same as we did into the previous session okay the same pattern sum okay so i think say i must say this is a homework from my side right you can just solve it on okay this is a homework from my side i'm moving aside on the countdown of five you can just pause this video and even solve it because this is a homework based sum okay so it's five four three two one that's it Ha ha ha! Awesome sum came, right? Again, this came at differentiation and integration, right? Motivates a lot, right? Now, okay, differentiation and integration kind of thing motivates us, us a lot. Okay, let's see this. What does it states? A charge is distributed within the sphere of the radius r with the volume charge density as this. Volume C now. Remember, first question in which I give you an additional information. Suppose if right the density is changing in the very first question we took right the density is constant but suppose here if the density is changing see q is the total charge then what will be the value of the radius r okay density is changing in that resistivity we kept it as a constant but here obviously density is changing but that kind of the pattern of the question came upon na 
right okay and you're going to enjoy this okay let's solve this first of all if i want to tell you all right about the the uh this volume charge density okay this thing we have seen right into the lectures what actual the volume charge density is how much amount of the charge that is distributed right over this specific volume how much charge right it is distributed over the specific volume so can i say this dq that is is equal to rho into dv for sphere can i say dq that is is equal to rho dv as area into d of r or you can say d of x right okay here whether we are going to use r let's use this r okay for a sphere can i replace area as dq that is is equal to rho into 4 pi of r square dot dr now one question always arises into the uh, right uh, the students mind whether this rho is constant or not whether this rho is constant or not so rho is not constant so we are going to replace and find the equation of dq we are going to replace the it's a by r square e raised to minus 2r by a a by r square e raised to minus 2r by a into 4 pi r square dot dr rho 0 yes see i have replaced this equation r square r square is going to get cancelled you are going to get equation of dq that a right into 4 pi e raised to minus 2r by a into dr let's integrate this equation you are going to get q that is is equal to integration of 4 pi of a e raised to minus 2r by a dot dr so q you are going to get 4 pi by a 4 pi a is common okay let's make it from 0 to r 0 to r e raised to minus 2r by a dot dr okay now this is a very simple integration so q you are going to get it as 4 pi a e raised to minus 2r by a whole divided by 2r by a limiting from 0 to r okay so this is going to come up as this is minus okay so this is going to come as 4 pi a into small a right whole divided by 2 of r okay and this is going to come as e raised to 2 r by a minus 1 okay now we need to calculate the value of r right sorry this is a value is small a we need to calculate the value of r right now this is what we need to calculate now we need to calculate the value of r okay so it means yes log is going to come up okay so it is 2 r q whole divided by 4 pi a into a is equal to e raised to 2 r minus 1 right 2 r q but this is gonna get cancelled even now right this 2 is gonna get cancelled right something is remaining no so this is gonna be r q whole divided by 2 pi capital a small a is equal to e raised to 2 r right by a okay minus 1 now we have to rearrange this term okay we have to rearrange this term so rearranging this term you are going to get r q whole divided by 2 pi of right a of a that is you are going to get it as plus 1 that is e raised to 2 r by a i think something we have missed okay something we have missed just hold on guys something we have missed okay again we are integrating it because we did an awesome mistake here don't get worried question is simple but we did a mistake
right so this is q is equal to 4 pi of a if we are integrating this is minus uh, 2 r by a whole divided by minus 2 by a right limiting from 0 to r okay so finally you are going to get is 4 pi right a into small a whole divided by 2 okay you are going to get it as e raised to minus 2 r by a minus 1 okay so this is going to be 2 q by 4 pi a of a right or in another sense i can write it down as if 2 2 is going to get cancelled right then i can write it down as q by 2 pi a right minus 1 okay sorry this will be invert so it will be 1 minus right yes okay so finally you are going to get it as okay. q by 2 pi capital a small a 1 minus right is equal to e raised to minus 2 r by a okay so e raised to 2 r by a that is going to come up as 1 whole divided by 1 minus q by 2 of pi a into right so this is going to be 2 r is equal to 1 by 1 minus q of 2 pi a capital a right and r 2 r by a so r is going to be a by 2 ln of 1 by 1 minus q by 2 pi a capital a okay yes this much long is it is right okay so this is the perfect answer for this specific question okay this is the perfect answer for this specific question <laughs> okay anything anything we have done right let's check it out again okay i'm sorry there is an error into the printing right this is only the perfect answer we did done okay okay guys so i think uh, okay let's move on see lots of sums are there right so students uh, this was all about uh, the pyqs of the current electricity i think it's time to go right again we are going to come back tomorrow we are going to start with a new chapter moving charges and magnetism right so uh, i think it's time to go right so this is indrajit singh signing off from the desk right satsri akal and namaste from my side right stay at home stay safe stay healthy amidst this pandemic